Hello, hello, my fourth grade scientist buddies. I hope you're staying warm in this cold weather. I like the snow during wintertime, but I don't love how cold it gets. When I was younger, spring was my favorite season because I liked to play outside and catch bugs. This is one reason that I think pollinators are so cool, because I liked to catch butterflies and then let them go when I was a kid. Once, I even got to buy a kit to raise my own caterpillars at home until they turned into butterflies. Today's science is going to be focused around a demonstration that I and other scientists that I work with have prepared for you. Before we get into it, let's review what we talked about last week. To remind you, pollination is when pollen is transferred from one flower to another in order to allow the plants to reproduce or make more plants. And pollinators are things that make pollination happen. Last week, we also talked about how pollinator numbers are declining. And this is a problem for farmers because pollinators are important for producing crops. This is also important for all of us because we all need to eat food. Something that we didn't talk about last week that you might not know is that humans can be pollinators too. In situations where pollinators are not around, farmers and food producers can move pollen from one flower to another using a hand pollinator. Hand pollinators are tools designed by scientists that mimic or copy pollinators in real life. Today, you'll be seeing scientist buddies building our own hand pollinators to use with some special flowers. As we go, take note of which hand pollinators work for each type of flower. And I have a few questions for you to think about while we do the demonstration. Does one size fit all? Why or why not? How does this relate to living pollinators in nature? For this experiment, we're going to be using some model pollen and some model flowers to explore hand pollinators and pollination. These four pieces of plastics are our plants where the pollen starts. We're using these plastic pieces as a model of some different types of flowers. This bent pipe is modeling a flower like a bucket orchid, which stores its pollen along the tunnel walls of its bucket shape. This test tube is modeling a flower like a Dutchman's pipe, which stores its pollen at the bottom of a long tube. This test tube with a flap covering the top is modeling a flower like the Jack in the Pulpit, which stores its pollen at the bottom of the long tube and underneath a small flap. This Petri dish is modeling a flower like the Poppy, which stores its pollen right at the center of its petals. Lastly, this plastic flower is where we'll tap our hand pollinators to see how much pollen the hand pollinators were able to pick up. I've designed four hand pollinators for us to explore. All right, I have filled our flowers up with pollen so they are ready to go. Let's do this. All right, let's start with our first pollinator. It's pink. It's a pipe cleaner that's twisted with buttons on the end. And reminder, this is going to be our collector flowers. So let's start with our first pollinating flower. And it looks like the buttons are too big and it's not going to fit inside of that one. Nothing's coming out. Now let's try our second flower. This one. Oh, it doesn't look like this one's going to go into the tube. This flap is in the way. That one didn't work either. Let's try our third flower. Oh, it will let go. The pipe cleaner is too flimsy. You can't make it all the way in. So that one didn't work either. All right, and let's try our last flower here. It fits in the flower. Did it pick up any pollen? A little bit, yeah. All right, let's try, let's try our second hand pollinator. It is a popsicle stick with pipe cleaner wrapped around to a feather. We'll start with this one. Looks like the feather's able to wrap around and pick up some pollen. And there it is. Let's try our second flower type. Um, 
looks like this feather doesn't want to go through. It's getting stuck on the flap. Oh, now it's stuck on the flap again, the pipe cleaner is. That one's not going to work. Let's try our third flower. This one. Goes right in. Scoops up some pollen. Not very much though. And let's do our last flower type. Right in the middle. And we'll tap it. One, two, three. We got a little bit there. Here's our third hand pollinator. pollinator. Uh, we've got a little clothespin attached to a pipe cleaner wrapped around a little fuzzy ball at the end here. Let's try it with our first flower. Hmm. See if we got any. There it is. Let's try our second flower type. Is it gonna get stuck on the flap this time? No. There we go. One, two, three. Okay, our next flower, flower. Right in. One, two, three. All right, and we have one last flower type. Right in the middle. On to our flower. One, two, three. Here's our last pollinator type. It is a popsicle stick with four little fuzzy balls at the end. Let's try it with our first flower. Well, it looks like it is not going to fit into the tube. Let's try our second, second flower type. Again, not going to fit into this test tube. Let's try our third flower type. Too small of a test tube, too big of a pollinator. And let's try our last flower type. There we go. One, two, three. Here's a summary of our results. Pause this video to take a minute and look at how well each one did. Which pollinator was the best fit for each flower? All right, that was fun for me. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let's talk about those questions that I gave you to think about during the demonstration. I'll give you a few seconds here to think about them again before we talk about them. Feel free to pause this video to think about it longer. As a reminder, the questions were, does one size fit all? Why or why not? How does this relate to living pollinators in nature? I think we could see that one size does not fit all. Different types of flowers store their pollen in different places, and so different types of pollinators will be best for pollinating certain types of plants. In nature, butterflies and hummingbirds and bees are all pollinators that are different shapes and sizes, and so they will be better at pollinating different types of flowers. So not only is it important to have a lot of pollinators, it's important to have diversity or different kinds of pollinators. And to answer a question that you might have about why we can't just hand pollinate all of our crops if the pollinators are dying, well, it's because it would take a really long time to do. Next, I want to spend some time to again talk about what scientists do. Something that happens in nature is called a phenomenon. While some types of scientists observe phenomena and make conclusions about our world, others design models to solve problems in nature. This is because sometimes we want to predict how something is happening in nature when it's really difficult to observe that natural phenomenon. For example, we just used a model, fake flowers, to predict which hand pollinators would be most effective at capturing and transferring pollen to another flower. 
Other scientists use computers and math to model what is happening on a large scale. For example, scientists from the American Association for the Advancement of Science were able to predict how endangered wild bees are living in different parts of the United States by looking at records of how the land is being used there and determining how much good food is available for the bees. By using the computer to calculate the models, researchers are able to predict where there may be trouble for the bees without having to travel all across the United States and count for themselves. I hope this helps you see the importance of using models in science. Another example of researchers using models to solve important problems is the coronavirus pandemic. Scientists are using computers and math to build models that predict how many people will get sick and how quickly they will get sick so they can send the right amounts of equipment and materials to hospitals so that we are as prepared as possible to help sick people get healthy again. Can you think of any other ways that scientists use models to observe and measure things? It always seems like our time goes by so quickly, but that's all that I have for you today. Before the video ends, I want to show you some of the hand pollinators that some scientist buddies I work with designed and built themselves. Some are really good and some are, well, not so good. Watch for yourselves. I will see you next week, scientist buddies. Goodbye. Uh-oh. This isn't look like the right shape. Thank you.